guys, it's Daisy here. Welcome back to my channel. Now, as I mentioned a while ago, I wanted to do some book reviews on this my second channel, and today I have the opportunity to do one. Now, you will have noticed that the company who publishes this book is sponsoring me to do this video. Bear in mind, they originally approached me to do a 60 second commercial plug on my main channel, like I normally do with my sponsors. However, I liked the book so much that I asked them if I could also do a book review because I wanted the chance to talk about it in more detail rather than just like, you know, two minutes or less. My praise for this book has not been bought. I promise you, I just really did like it that much. The book is called Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman and is a manual for couples on how to achieve a lasting romantic marriage by embracing and embodying the principles of femininity. While the book is written for women, I would highly recommend that you men watching this read it as well, like in all seriousness. If you want to understand the women in your life a bit more, or you want to improve your relationships, or, or gain some insight into the science behind why men and women are different, this really is something that you should read. Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, or Timeless as it is called for short, is written by Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Timeless is not political, it doesn't propagate any kind of religion, it's suitable for couples of all ages and at all stages of their relationship and will be enjoyed by anyone of any background. It is also, contrary to what some might assume, very much geared towards women who want to have careers as well as women who would prefer to be homemakers. There is no hidden agenda, it is all about choice and self-acceptance while challenging yourself to self-improve. Everyone can enjoy this book without feeling uncomfortable or like they are being preached to, which is so refreshing nowadays. The goal of Timeless is to improve marriages and relationships by encouraging women to embrace the tools that they already have, their femininity and feminine power. As the book mentions, and as I often talk about on my main channel, femininity has been much maligned over the past two decades, and mostly by women. Women have been taught that in order to exist in the modern world, we have to emulate men. Femininity is considered less than masculinity, less potent, and that it garners less influence, and that therefore embracing femininity inherently means being subservient to men. But according to Timeless, and according to me, that is simply not true. Women are not good at being men, as is outlined in Chapter 3, entitled Feminine Power. When women practice masculine power, they naturally become less feminine and more masculine. But women are not good at being men, and so it puts them at a disadvantage. Have you ever stopped to realize that copying men is an admission that, as women, we aren't good enough, maybe even inferior? Is it preferable to be a man? No. There is everything right with being a feminine, fascinating woman. We don't have to betray our own sex to be loved, treasured, or even professional. If you want to hear more of that kind of material, you are going to love Chapter 8, entitled Thanks for the Pants, which gives a terrific outline of first, second, and third wave feminism. It analyzes the many pros and also the cons of each wave. And look, people always ask me on my other channel if I can explain the different waves of feminism, so I really do recommend you read Timeless. Dixie explains all the waves of feminism much better than I can. Now, Fascinating Womanhood teaches that femininity is at least as great as masculinity and is a powerful tool for women in building strong, lasting relationships. It also teaches that while men are the builders, protectors, and organizers of, of civilization, women are the gatekeepers. Without good women exerting a positive influence, all that is civil about civilization, especially family life, will crumble. Which is why the lessons in Timeless about cultivating specifically feminine power are so important. According to Timeless, the elements that make up feminine power are women's capacity to love, spirituality, delicacy in the form of women's determination to hold precious, fragile things together, like, of course, relationships, sensitivity, dignity, graciousness, gentleness, quiet strength, charm, and understanding men. As for how this power can be unleashed, so to speak, Timeless says it can begin with just very simple things like the way women say something or how we move, tone of voice and presentation, even facial expressions. And it is of course reflected in the way we treat others and the way we develop our own character. And it is the very best way to relate to men, both romantically and platonically. After a while, men grow tired of their own kind, who are often insensitive and competitive with each other. If we try to act like one of the guys in order to get close to a man we adore, then we become like another man to him. What do they want with one more guy? 
Why would we want to be thought of as just another man in his life? What makes us different from men is what attracts them to us. Our feminine nature brings out the best in men and in ourselves. This is why and how, in many cases, opposites attract. This feeds into one of the main principles of Timeless, which is that women exercising femininity will inherently bring out masculinity and good character in men. It will inspire men to lean into their tendencies towards protecting and providing, not in a paternalistic way, but in a way that is facilitating the comfort and well-being of the people that they love. So, ladies and interested men, in order to harness feminine power, we need to understand femininity, outlined in Chapter 5. According to Timeless, femininity is a physical and mental state. It is not simply about, you know, what you wear and how you present. The physical side of femininity includes, obviously, women's ability to bear and feed children, and also things like women's propensity for hard work over long, long hours, often for no thanks, when it comes to managing and organizing a household. Mentally, femininity is women's aptitude for leadership in fostering and maintaining relationships, which is aided by what Timeless calls women's conspicuous gift for charm. There is a fantastic chapter in Timeless that is wholly dedicated to feminine charm. It covers everything from making conversation, to generating romance in your relationship, to ensuring guests in your home feel comfortable and at ease. So if you are lacking in confidence and looking to develop your social skills and your character, that is the chapter for you. Would highly recommend. And now, what I would imagine critics of Fascinating Womanhood have said over time is that it focuses too much on the concept that women and men are stereotypically different. But those critics would be well off the mark because there is plenty of science behind that concept, which is one of the main reasons that I loved Timeless. The reasons why men and women are different are covered in chapters 9 and 10, which are my favorite chapters, by the way, and another reason why I think men also really need to read this book, and involve the differences between male and female brains. These chapters are based on a comprehensive study by Dr. Robert D. Forsyth, PhD, a licensed and practicing neurophysicist who also happens to be the husband of timeless author Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. The differences between male and female brains primarily relate to the upper left and upper right parts of the brain, how they connect and how that influences thoughts and behavior. Now the upstairs part of the brain is where you want to be most of the time if you aim to live in a civilized, productive way. The upper left part of the brain is the rational part. It's analytical, logical, contains the most important speech centers, and it focuses on planning, boundaries, and a sense of time. It's often thought of as the conscious mind and functions through observing. The upper right side of the brain is the intuitive, creative mind. As Timeless explains, if you've ever had like a bad feeling about something in your gut or you felt uncomfortable, like something doesn't fit or that you simply need to leave a place, that's your intuitive mind sensing things it can't prove. It's also very connected to the spiritual and sees things in feelings and pictures. Now, obviously, both men and women have upper left and right sides of the brain. But how are they different? For the female brain, research has shown that there is more of a connection between the upper right and left portions, allowing for them to work together in a more natural and efficient way. Men tend to enjoy greater connectivity within each side of the upper brain, especially from the front to the back. This means that men are more inclined to be more visual, nonverbal, and action-oriented, and it indicates that women tend towards a comparatively easier time with communication. With greater connections between left and right, or side to side, the female brain has an easier time with upstairs left-right integration, and this has many potential implications. As women, we can talk about how we feel or verbalize ideas faster and easier than a man, and we are better suited to combine analytical and intuitive thinking in what is often referred to as women's intuition. As Timeless acknowledges, this difference can be really frustrating for women. When we sense that something is wrong with our husband or partner, nine times out of 10, if we ask him what's wrong, he'll say words to the effect of nothing or it's fine, even though clearly that is not the case. The issue is that while women have quicker and easier access to verbalizing our feelings because of how our brains work, 
Men usually need a little bit of extra time to get to that point because of how their brains work. So the lesson that I learned from Timeless is that I must accept that biologically men have a different way of processing things and that the best thing women can do is just be patient because once enough time passes, a man who trusts you will open up. The way men's brains are wired means they have their own strengths as well. While, while women tend to be better verbally, you know, better at managing relationships and more emotionally astute, men tend to be more specialized in their focus and abilities, which is one of the reasons men often become great experts in one singular discipline. Ultimately, chapter nine taps into the message of fascinating womanhood that I really love, which is that men and women are equal and different. Being equal doesn't necessarily mean being the same. And the thing is, there is actually a lot that is the same about male and female brains, namely the downstairs part of the brain, which Dixie refers to as the guard dog. The downstairs is a collection of parts in charge of survival, pleasure, and most of our automatic processes like breathing, hunger, etc. The reason our sense of pleasure comes from this area is because generally things that feel good have something to do with survival, such as eating food. However, while the downstairs part of the brain is responsible for what makes us feel calm or excited, it's also responsible for what makes us feel anxious, frightened, or angry. So in relationship terms, Timeless advises that if you can learn how to calm your partner's guard dog and find what sets it off in the first place, it will be hugely beneficial for the longevity and stability of the relationship. If your man is being defensive, combative, or avoidant, consider there is probably some survival or comfort element at play and it needs to be addressed before much else can be accomplished. Or if your guard dog is barking, you have to deal with it first before you deal with anything else. I love how Timeless conveys all of this in such an accessible way. The reason this is one of my favorite chapters is because it just clarifies so many things I've suspected about men and women for such a long time. And along with chapter 10, which is all about managing personal stress, I think that Timeless very much sits in the realm of a life guide as well as a relationship guide. And again, good for men as well as women. The discussion of brain chemistry in chapter 10 is hugely helpful for men and women, especially if you're someone like me who gets really daunted by things like meditation or finds mindfulness difficult. For me, reading chapter 10, Having more knowledge about brain chemicals like dopamine, cortisol, and how they contribute to how we think and feel made stress seem a lot less overwhelming. I mean, if you can reduce it mentally to a series of chemicals, it makes it seem much easier to manage since there are tricks to managing your brain chemistry. For example, the dopamine shower. Whenever you feel good, you're probably feeling increased levels of dopamine. A dopamine shower is any healthy effort that seeks to naturally and safely stimulate dopamine production in your brain and body. This includes mental or physical efforts that will encourage the body to produce more of this feel-good substance. The most effective way I have found is to quietly think of things for which I am sincerely grateful, to list what is going well in my life, or to relive wonderful experiences in my past. This is very useful information for everyone, particularly in these trying times. And I think in a book about formulating strong relationships, the fact that Timeless has so much material dedicated to the science of mental well-being, which is such a factor in the making or breaking of relationships, really does set it apart from other relationship manuals out there. And what I think Timeless also addresses very strongly is how women can understand men. Men are chronically misunderstood nowadays. They are called oppressors, they're accused of having unearned privilege, and their masculinity is dismissed as toxic. And I find that other relationship manuals geared towards women that talk about you know, understanding men do it with a really patronizing, misunderstood edge. Timeless is nothing like that. Dixie and Lynn Forsyth perceives masculinity as the very best version of themselves that men can be. And women understanding that is a key to a lasting romantic relationship. And I love how she defines masculinity in chapter 11. Men are not at all the same, but all truly masculine men are both strong and caring. They balance out their commitments to work and external responsibilities with the love of the women in their lives and their families. They happily embrace their roles as fathers and husbands. They are courageous and chivalrous and have a deep respect for all life. Their self-esteem is healthy enough to show tenderness and mercy and they are willing to protect the lives of those they love and those who depend upon them. This feeds into chapter 12, which elaborates on something that is key to women understanding men, and that is, of course, masculine pride. 
Any sensible woman knows instinctively that men have a great amount of pride and that wounding it, even accidentally, can do a great deal of damage to relationships. And this isn't because men are weak or high maintenance, it's because their masculine pride is at the very core of who they are. You don't just get to swatch the core of someone's being and expect them not to be hurt by it. Dixie outlines this wonderfully. Masculine pride is his instinctive sense of delight and fulfillment in being a competent man, in overcoming vulnerability, his awareness of his nature and his identity as a man, and his embracing of it for his personal fulfillment and the benefit of those he loves. Men naturally feel a sense of pride in being the male they are or aspire to be, and this pride can be quite easily wounded. Anything that invalidates his physicality, his social role, or his role in a relationship can injure his sense of masculine pride. A lack of understanding of this concept is often a major blind spot for women. Oh, a major blind spot indeed, at least in part because, in my opinion, women don't actually have anything equivalent to masculine pride. Sure, some of us have what you'd call feminine pride, but we don't seem to get anywhere near as wounded if someone comes after our femininity. I think the difference is that since masculinity is very much geared towards the protector-provider instinct, if you undercut that in men, they feel like they have failed or will fail the people they care about, and that is an incredibly high threshold. Masculine pride is a very specific thing, and it is so easy for women to trample all over it accidentally, let alone women who are cruel enough to do it on purpose. Which is why I was so pleased chapter 12 has an outline of ways to avoid accidentally wounding his masculine pride and also how to gain his trust. According to Timeless, trusting the woman he loves is exceedingly important for men, otherwise he will stay behind what fascinating womanhood calls his wall of reserve. Since men tend to protect themselves first and trust when it is more convenient. Now, any woman who's ever been in a relationship with a man will know how impossible it can sometimes be to melt away that wall of reserve, especially if you have accidentally wounded his masculine pride. As outlined in Timeless, ways to melt that wall and maintain his pride include validating and praising the qualities that make him, well, masculine. Things like his physique, his capacity as a protector and provider, his courage, his skills, all the things that go into making him what he feels is a competent man. Men are tough, but even the toughest can be so fragile if nicked in the right spot. And I think these chapters on masculinity and understanding men clear up a lot of misconceptions that women have about how to treat men. A must read for the modern woman in this age of dismissing masculinity as toxic. So all in all, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman provides about the most practical guide to relationships I've ever come across. I mean, who'd have thunk that highlighting and celebrating the differences between men and women could be such a useful thing? Timeless encourages women to self-improve, but doesn't guilt trip them. It doesn't insist women leap to crazy heights or try to emulate impossibilities to live happier lives and have happier relationships. To me, the message of Fascinating Womanhood is that women already have all the tools within them to improve their lives, their mindsets, and their relationships. They just need to embrace the wonderful inherent qualities that make them women. What I take from Timeless is that if masculinity and femininity are accepted as equal but different qualities that complement and improve each other, couples can, obviously, become the ultimate team which is a much more hopeful, life-affirming message than so many other life advice books for women. I would highly recommend everyone read Timeless, both men and women. I have put the links to where you can purchase Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman in the video description, plus the links to Fascinating Womanhood's social media platforms. You should definitely, definitely, definitely check them out and purchase Timeless. You will love it and you will not regret it.